So now that you have completed your study um, or your the degree uh, from the Islamic University, what are you doing now in terms of dawa? What do you think is really important in terms of dawa um, for you know young students of knowledge, young scholars? Like, what do you think really needs to be the emphasis, and how are you pursuing that today? Yeah. So I always had this in the back of my mind as I was studying abroad because. From the minute I embraced Islam, I felt a duty to give da'wah because I was the only Muslim in my family, the only Muslim in my neighborhood, the only Muslim amongst all my friends. So I immediately always felt this duty, like I have an obligation to give da'wah, to call people to Islam. So as I was going abroad and studying, I was always thinking, like, how am I going, like, how is what I'm learning practical? How am I going to teach the people and use it to call them to Islam? And I think for me, I... I got a degree in visual communication design um, the year I embraced Islam. So it was my last year of college. I had been studying graphics, web design, audio. I was into music, so I knew how to record and video and all these things. So I just, I felt like perhaps my calling, the, the, you know, where I could get in where I fit in is to try to use those tools and give other people a platform because, alhamdulillah, even though I, I studied in Medina, I graduated, it's like I'm still... Not, I don't even feel comfortable calling myself a student of knowledge. I mean, and that's not to be fake humble. It's just the fact. That's just how I feel. And I would rather give people who are knowledgeable a platform. You know, that's why I've tried to interview people like yourself, people like Sheikh Tahir White, like Mufti Muhammad Munir, and the various people, Joe Bradford, all these people trying to give them a platform and use these skills that I have to sort of, you know, spread the deen. And as for myself, also, I mean, teaching the basics. A lot of us, we just need to know the basics, you know. So, inshallah, hopefully I'm at least qualified to teach some of the basics and also try to make things practical. I feel like that's something that's missing from a lot of da'wah is practicality. You know, and that's something I really appreciate about your da'wah in particular because I feel like you address things that are all around us. You know, you, you, you know there's an elephant in the room and you say, look, there's an elephant in the room, you know, like, and you... It's like it's very practical and important stuff. So getting our priorities straight and all of that. So that's basically what I'm trying to do with like my YouTube channel, Institute, and just collaborating. You know, that's what I want to do is collaborate with other brothers and students and scholars. All right. And so when it comes to collaboration and giving others a platform, you're mentioning your background in audiovisual. So do you think that there is a specific role within social media that Muslims should be utilizing in this day and age? Because there are some people who will say that, you know, social media is something that leads to a lot of corruption and it kind of creates an environment where everyone thinks that they're a scholar or everyone thinks that they are qualified to speak on certain things where they're clearly not qualified. And so they don't want to feed into that environment. So how do you think um, social media should be utilized? What is the balance? Are there dangers? What's the cost benefit analysis there? Yeah, I think I have somewhat of a unique perspective than some of my colleagues because I, I embraced Islam on the internet. Like I, I literally, I was in my basement and I was thinking like, what's the purpose of life? I've searched everywhere and then it, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah guided me, go read the Quran, you know? So I went upstairs, I typed in Google, Quran, and, and I started reading and I embraced Islam. And, I, and then I looked up YouTube, you know, and um, I learned how to pray on YouTube. Like some of the shubahat that I had about uh, the Prophet Sallallahu and what people say about him, I would search it and, you know, there was other du'at on there addressing these problems. So I'm obviously, because of that, I'm biased. You know, I feel like it's extremely important because that's sort of how I came to Islam. But I also think just if we're honest with ourselves, I mean... I feel like everyone is online all the time. Everyone's on their smartphones, even little kids. They're on their smartphones, on their iPads. Like People are listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos. They're on social media. So people are going to be on there whether the du'at and the scholars are on there or not. You know. So I feel like it's, it's crucial that, that people who have proper knowledge are on there. Otherwise, there's going to be a void for people who aren't knowledgeable to, to lead the people astray. And I feel like that's what's going on. So um, I feel like that's a, a real problem. A lot of us students and perhaps some of the scholars, you know, I'm, is me trying to convince them of the importance of this, you know, and Allahu alam, I could be wrong, but that's the way I see it. You know, I feel like you have to utilize the Internet and social media in this day and age. It's sort of like when the printing press was invented, it's sort of like not using it. You know, it's like you have to, you know, that's just that's just where you know, media is spreading and ideas are, are spreading nowadays. So that's yeah, sort of it's like idea. unavoidable basically is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So then you're saying that some people are 
hesitant? What are some of the reasons that they give for that? Like, why do, how do they explain that? Oh, no, I prefer not to. Yeah, well, you know, I think, subhanAllah, almost everybody that I meet, I mean, if I feel like they have, they have some knowledge, they've studied, I mean, so many of my classmates and stuff and uh, teachers and so on and so forth, I mean, I feel like pretty much everybody, I always try to invite them on the platform, you know, and um, so often people are hesitant and it's hard to know. I mean, of course, there's the whole being humble, you know, the whole humility of like, I'm just a student, I have no business you know, being in front of the people, but it's like, neither do I, you know, but it's like, there's, there's, if you don't do it, somebody who is less qualified is going to do it, you know, I mean, subhanAllah, we see how, how much craziness is spread online, and, you know, Zakh you do a good job of calling a lot of it out, but, it, but that's the thing, it's like, these brothers, you know, some of them, they have memorized the Quran, they've studied overseas, they've gotten degrees, you know, studying in Medina, like Saudi Arabia gave them a scholarship and paid thousands of dollars to fly them back and forth and to give them an education. And it's like, if you're not qualified to do it, like, I don't know, I mean, it, we're just desperate. It's like in, in Saudi Arabia, cool, you can say that because there's ulama everywhere. Like in, in Saudi Arabia, I wouldn't be giving da'wah. I would just be sitting, doing classes, working a job. But it's like, here, it's not the same situation. It's like, there are all these voids and unless like, like we shouldn't go beyond our, you know, our knowledge and talk about things we don't know, but people just need the basics. And if we have the basics, if we've studied overseas for eight years, we should have the basics and be able to at least spread that, you know? So, yeah. So um, shifting gears a little bit, um, you're coming from a Protestant Christian background. I think uh, it would be interesting, uh, given that you've studied now and, and you've been a Muslim for quite some time, alhamdulillah, do you have any tips on the best way to do dawah specifically to Christians uh, in the West? Do you have any like unique perspective on that? You know, I've been, I guess I've been a, a bit out of touch because I became Muslim and then I went to Medina and I just sort of got back. I haven't done a whole lot of dawah towards Christians, but I mean, the way that I do approach this to, to me as somebody who was Christian, it all boils down to the source, you know, that, that's what it is to me. So to me, it's like, okay, you're saying Jesus is God, he's the son of God, or you're believing in the Bible, you know, what's the proof that this has been preserved, you know? And like people like uh, Bart Ehrman, for example, if you're familiar with some of his work, he's written extensively about the preservation, the historical view of Jesus and stuff like that. And we know that Islam is the truth, so so much of the actual, you know, um, stuff that these experts find about the Bible and Christianity, it all, it all lines up with Islam. So that's usually what I focus on is, is about the, the preservation because um, the Quran has been preserved, the Hadith have been preserved, um, whereas the Bible, the Torah, pretty much, I mean, any other religion, it, it hasn't, you know, so that's sort of what I generally focus on is just the preservation. If you're going to make, if you're going to say that Jesus is God, whereas throughout time and even in, even in their own book and the older traditions, it was always about there being one true God, like, you have to really substantiate that claim about Jesus being God. Like, what's your proof of that? So that's usually, I mean, that's just what comes to mind is I would approach it in regards to the authenticity of the Bible, you know. So would you, do you actually, like, have citations and references that you share with um, those Christians that you're doing da'wah for, to, or maybe even your family members? Well, I think what I generally, well, a big thing is I find it hard to even find Christians nowadays, honestly. I mean... Mm. I feel like my generation sort of left Christianity, so I don't even I don't even feel like there's. I mean, do you come across Christians a lot? I just feel like I was raised Christian, but I don't feel like any of my friends or even my family. I feel like everyone just sort of sort of left it. Like there's no sort of intellectual, you know, like attachment to that actual religion. You know, it's just it's like just a cultural kind of exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So. I don't need, so it's like, I just feel like even quoting the Bible, again, like, I don't, I don't feel like it's necessarily been preserved to even quote it. So I just feel like, you know, I, I try to explain the preservation of like a hadith and the pr preservation of the, the Quran so that people understand what preservation actually looks like, because then you can hold that up next to the Bible and, and they can really see like, oh yeah, we don't even know who wrote the Bible. You know, we don't even, even if you, like Bart Ehrman, for example, he, he talks about how even in their own tradition, in the Christian tradition, they know that the Bible has been changed and there's so many variations and so on and so forth. So it's like, if, it, if it's not trustworthy, I don't, you know, personally, I wouldn't 
you know, invest my uh, my akhirah and my life in, in a book that hasn't even been preserved, you know? I mean, that's amazing. Like, uh, as Muslims, we do have these preserved, Re- revelation has been preserved through the Quran, through the statements of the Prophet ﷺ. And still, there are Muslims who are cultural and who don't really have any connection. They aren't inspired. Their lives aren't guided by it. Um, and then you have like Christians who they don't even have that in the first place. So, subhanAllah, we take for granted a lot of things that we have as Muslims. Yeah, that's something I think a lot of converts sort of struggle with is that, alhamdulillah, Allah guided us from being so far astray. And like, alhamdulillah, like many of us, we appreciate what we have. And then when you go... To the Muslims, you expect them to be like the Sahaba, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know any Muslims until I embraced Islam, so I, I went with this preconceived notion of like, you know, and that's not the case. And I mean, perhaps you would know better as to why that is than I, than I do. I mean, but um, yeah, I mean, the the perhaps it's just lack of knowledge or emphasis on what Islam actually is. But I just know like there was the Quran. Me just reading an English translation, I was like, this is incredible. Just the English translation. Then. I learned about how it's actually like an Arabic recitation. And I heard the recitation. I was like, subhanAllah, that's what it actually, that's what the Quran actually is. And then you hear, then I would learn about how it's been preserved, you know? So it's just, that's just sort of how my approach to Islam was. But I guess it's just a matter of, I mean, of course, Allah guides whom he pleases, but a lot of it is also a matter of um, informing people of this. Perhaps they just don't know, you know? Yeah.